I'm just introducing to you transformations of functions. We're going to look at a few different uh, functions and transformations of those functions this unit. Uh, first function, we're going to look at the function f of x equals x squared, so a basic quadratic function. We'll apply different parameters to that function. We'll call this the parent function of quadratics and see what transformations um, happen when we apply different parameters to that. We'll also look at the function root x, and we'll also look at the rational function 1 over x. So we'll work with those three, we'll call those parent functions, and we'll look at how we can transform the graphs of those functions by applying different parameters, uh, we'll call them a, k, d, and c, to the equations of those parent functions. So first of all, when I'm saying transformation, what does that mean? So basically a transformation means we're either going to be um, shifting the function, so shifting the graph of the function, uh, either left, right, up, or down, or we're going to actually be changing the shape of the function um, by doing what's called vertical or horizontal stretches or compressions, or also vertical and horizontal um, reflections. And how we're going to do that is by um, looking at the parent function f at x, so like these were different parent functions we're going to work with, and we're going to apply different parameters to those parent functions. We're going to apply the parameters a, k, d, and c. And this is the general form of the equation of a transformed function. So g at x would be the equation um, of a transformed version of the function f at x. We'll call f at x the parent function and we'll call g at x the transformed function. So g at x is equal to some transformed version of the parent function f at x. But what we've done to f at x is we have <coughs> applied the parameters a, k, d, and c. Um, to move the graph of the function f at x, to stretch it, to compress it, shift it left, right, up and down, or reflect it. So let's just quickly look at, um, before we get into these functions, x squared root x, 1 over x, let's just quickly look at, um, oh, sorry, before our, um, I explain what a, k, d, and c do exactly, we're going to quickly look at uh, just a basic function like this. Um, and we'll do transformations to that before we actually look at quadratics, radical, and rational functions. So I mentioned a, k, d, and c. So here's the equation of our transformed function g at x. It's equal to a times <coughs> f at x with uh, k, d, and a c in here as well. And what we're going to do is we're going to look at what exactly do these a, k, d, and c parameters do to the parent function f at x. So we'll go one at a time. We'll look at the vertical transformations first. So the vertical transformations are going to be a and c. And then the horizontal transformations are going to be caused by the k and d parameters. So let's look at a and c first. So c, <coughs> that's just going to shift the function up or down. If c is a positive number, so if it's greater than zero, it'll go up. If it's a negative number, so if c is less than zero, it'll shift it down. a is going to vertically stretch or compress the function. So a is going to be in front of the parent function f at x. It's multiplying the parent function f at x. So the a value is either going to vertically stretch or compress the function. If a is bigger than 1 or less than negative 1, so like 2, 3, 4, 5, or negative 2, negative 3, negative 4, negative 5, vertical stretch by a factor of a. If it's between negative 1 and 1, so like negative 0 0.5, 0 0.25, anything like that, usually expressed as a fraction, what's going to happen is we're going to have a vertical, vertical compression by a factor of that a value. And also to add in here, any a value that's negative, it's going to cause a vertical reflection. So what that does, it makes the function look like the x-axis was a mirror, and it reflects across that x-axis. And also it's important to note, when I'm talking about vertically stretching or compressing by a factor of a, that's talking about um, how the distance, the points of the function are changing in relation to where it is from the x-axis. So vertical stretch or compression means that the distance from the x-axis of each point of the parent function changes by a factor of a. And a vertical reflection, like I said, what happens is the x-axis acts as a mirror, and basically the y-coordinate of the parent function, uh, it just changes signs. So if it was positive, it becomes negative. If it was negative, it becomes positive. Um, and that's it for our vertical transformations. Horizontal transformations. So horizontal transformations, you'll see these parameters inside of brackets, and um, we have d, and we also have k. Let's start with d. That's going to cause um, a horizontal shift, either left or right, depending on the value of d. If d is a positive number, so bigger than zero, it'll shift right. If d, sorry, so this should say d here. If d is less than zero, 
then the graph shifts left by whatever the d value is. Now, the tricky part is <coughs> the general equation for a transformed function is x minus d. So if you see f at x minus 5, the d value is actually 5. So it would fall into this category and move right 5. If it's at x plus 5, that must mean the d value that was plugged in right here must have been negative 5. So we'd have x minus negative 5, which would appear as plus 5. So that would fall into this category, d being negative 5, less than 0, and it would shift left 5. So just be careful, the d um, value is always going to have the opposite integer of whatever it appears to have inside of the equation. Uh, k value. k is going to cause horizontal stretches or compressions. The k value also will be inside brackets but in front of the x. What's going to happen is it's going to cause, instead of a vertical stretch or compression like A, it's going to cause a horizontal stretch or compression um, by a factor of 1 over K. So since it's by a factor of 1 over K, um, when K is bigger than 1 or less than negative 1, that's actually go going to cause a horizontal compression by 1 over the K value. If it's between negative 1 and 1, it's actually going to cause a horizontal stretch by 1 over K. And if it's less than 0, so if it's a negative value, it's going to cause a horizontal reflection. And when we're talking about horizontal stretches and compressions, we're talking about uh, the points of the parent function, its distance changing by a factor of 1 over k in relation to the y-axis, so moving horizontally in relation to the y-axis. In a horizontal reflection, basically the y-axis is acting as a mirror, and the x-coordinate is just going to change signs. Okay, now that we've gotten all of the parameter definitions out of the way and we know what a, k, d, and c do to transform a parent function, we're actually going to apply the transformations and we're going to do them in this order. We're always going to do stretches, compressions, reflections first. So we'll apply the a and k parameters first and then we'll do our translations left and right. So then we'll do our d and c parameters after. So let's see what this looks like. So I've given you a parent function. Here's our parent function. Here's the graph of the parent function. What I want you to do, um, since we know this is f at x, I want you to graph g at x. Well, g at x is equal to the parent function f at x, but we have a parameter here. So inside brackets, we have something being added to the x. So this parameter right here is actually a d value. Remember, if we look back to the general equation of a transform function way at the beginning here, inside brackets with the x, being um, added or subtracted after is the d value. So <clears throat> we know d in here, and remember d is always the opposite sign of what appears here because it's x minus d, so this must be x minus negative 2, which makes it appear as x plus 2. So what we have here is actually shifting left 2. So our d value is negative 2. We need to shift every point of our parent function f at x left 2. So let's do that. Let's take each point and move each of them left 2. Move that one left 2 move this one left to this one and this one and then what we have if we connect these points I'll connect them in a different color here <clears throat> let's graph our transform function in blue since I wrote the transformations in blue so if we graph this function here connect our points what we have is the exact same function as f at x, but every single point has been shifted left two. So this new blue function that we have here, this is our transform function, and I like to call that g at x. So there's our transform function, g at x. G at x, exact same shape as f at x, but everything's been shifted left two units. Let's look at another example. This one, I only see one parameter. It's in front of the f at x, so that is our a value. So in this case, a is negative one. So negative 1, the only thing that's going to do is because it is negative, it's going to cause a vertical reflection. So in this case, it's going to cause a vertical reflection over the x-axis. So what that does, if you remember, it just changes the sign of all the y values. So if we take each point, this point is at the point, let me just jot it down for you here, it's at the point negative 2, 3. So what we need to do is just change the sign of that y value 3 and make it a negative 3. So um, <clears throat> our transform function is going to have a point at negative 2. Oh, sorry, not negative. Sorry, I wrote that point backwards. That point, sorry, this point is at negative 3, 2. Point negative 3, 
2. So our transformed function will have a point at negative 3, negative 2. The y value is going to change. So if I take this point, reflect it across the x-axis, there's the point for the transformed function. And the same thing is going to happen with the other points. This point is at negative 1, negative 3. So the transformed function is going to be at negative 1, positive 3. This point, once again, reflected across x, reflected across x, and there's my vertical reflection. Connect those points, and we have the graph of our transformed function. <clears throat> so here's our transformed function here. It's going to have the exact same shape, but you'll notice it looks like the x-axis was a mirror, and it reflected exactly across that. That is a hors or sorry, that is a vertical reflection. All that happened was each point, the y value, changed. This one, the y value is two. The transform function, y value is negative two. So all we did, I'm going to jot this down here. With the transformation, all we did was we multiplied all the y values by negative one. That's all that happened. So for each point, we multiplied the y values by negative one, which changes the sign of all of them. We get the graph of our transform transformed function. Our transformed function is g at x. And our parent function, the red one, was f at x. Let's do another example. This one I see a parameter added outside of the brackets after f at x. So all we have to do for this one, we have to know that this one, uh, this parameter is a c value. So if you remember back to the beginning of the video, a c value tells us it's going to be translated up by three units. So in this case, we have to shift up three units. So all we have to do is take each point, move it up three units. Three, three, three. Connect, and we have our transform function g at x. So, so far I've just been doing one transformation at a time. We're going to now do a more complicated one where we're going to have to do more than one transformation. And when we do that, so when we do this one here, we have two transformations. I have a k value of 2, a c value of negative 1. And I know it's a k value because it's in brackets and it's in front of the x. And this is a c because it's outside of the brackets after the x. What we're going to have to do, well, we don't have to do this, um, <clears throat> but the easiest way to do this is when we're doing multiple transformations, is to first list out the coordinates of the points of our parent function. So the points for the parent function f at x, we have point negative 3, 2, point negative 1, negative 3, 1, negative 2, 3, negative 2. So those are the points for our parent function. What we're going to do is we're going to apply the appropriate transformations to these points to get points called image points. So we're going to apply the transformations of f at x um, to get our transform function g at x, and we'll make a table of values for that function by applying the proper transformations, then we'll plot those points onto our graph to get the graph of the transformed function. So first of all, our parameters, k is, two, k is 2. So k value of 2 tells us it's a horizontal compression by a factor of 1 over k, so by a factor of 1 over 2. So that's our first transformation, horizontal compression by a factor of a half. So that means um, what we're going to have to do horizontally compressed by a factor of a half. Well, any horizontal transformation is going to affect the x values, and it's going to be compressed by a half, so that means we have to cut all the x values in half. So I'm just going to jot that down. We're going to have to cut all the x values in half. They're all going to be half the distance from the y-axis that the parent function is. The other transformation, our c value of negative 1, tells us it's going to be translated one unit down. So all we're going to have to do, so any vertical transformation, so shifting down is a vertical transformation, that's going to affect the y coordinates. So every point needs to move one down. So that means we have to take all our y values and take away one. That'll move every point down one. So if we apply these two transformations, cut all the x values in half, and subtract one from all the y values, then what we get are what are called image points. These image points can be used to graph the transformed function of f at x. So let's get our image points. So what we do is we take all the x values from the parent function, and what we do is we cut them in half. So instead of negative 3, we have negative 1.5. Instead of negative 1, we have negative 0 0.5. Instead of 1, cut it in half, we have 0 0.5. Instead of 3, cut it in half, we have 1.5. 
Now for the y values, <clears throat> we just have to take all of these y values from the parent function and we have to subtract one. So instead of two, we take away one, we get one. Instead of negative three, we get negative four, and so on. And now what we have here are image points. And these image points will be the transformed version of this parent function. So <clears throat> it'll be horizontally compressed by a factor of a half. So the points will be, in, will be half the distance from the y-axis. So this point is three units from the y-axis. So the transformed function will be half of that. It'll be 1.5. And it will have moved down one. So the transformed function point will be right here. And look, if we look at our table of values, the point negative 1.51 negative 1.51, it's right here. And if we plot the rest of our points from our table of values, so negative 0 0.5, negative 4, cut in half horizontally, down 1, we get that point, this point right here, negative 0 0.5, negative 4. This one, cut the distance from the y-axis in half horizontally, move it down 1, and we get the next point, 0 0.5, negative 3. Same with this, cut in half horizontally, that gives us to 1.5, down 1, negative 3. Here are the points for our transformed function. We can connect them and see that it looks like the function has been compressed horizontally. Oops, I'll do that with the straight line tool. Here we go. It looks like someone has squished the function from the sides, right, horizontally compressing it and moving it down 1. So if we apply the transformations, to the key points, we'll call those um, the points of the parent function, we get what are called the image points, which will give us the graph of the transformed function. And don't forget to label this transformed function, we've called this transformed function g at x. Okay, that's it for um, just an intro to transformations. So um, <clears throat> you just have to make sure you understand what the parameters a, k, d, and c, a, k, d, and c, do to transform the parent function f at x to give us um, our transform function g at x. And here's just a quick review. You can pause it, read through this. C shifting it up and down. A vertically stretching and compressing it. Then we have D, which shifts it left and right. And K, which will horizontally stretch or compress it by a factor of one over K. All right, uh, make sure uh, watch the next lessons if you want to see actually doing transformations of our parent functions x squared root x and 1 over x.